Okay, now we have question number 11 from February, March 2019, paper for variant 2. This is the last question of the paper and it's about sequences. And um, here we see, okay, we have two sequences A and B. Okay, so first of all, we've got to complete the table for the sixth term of each sequence. So we've got to look for a pattern. Okay, so one of the ways to look for a pattern to see is to see if you can add a certain number each time to get to the next number. So a very um, useful thing to do is to look at the differences between each term. So you can see from 7 to 13, you've got to add 6. And from 13 to 23, you've got to add 10. So it's not a linear sequence because you're not adding the same amount each time. So it's definitely not linear now. And from 23 to 37, you've got to add 14. 37 minus 23 is 14. And from 37 to 55, that's going to be uh, 47 plus 8. That's 18. That's going to be, yeah, so it's 10 plus 8, 18. Okay. If you want to just confirm in case you do make a mistake mentally, you could confirm by just doing like 55 minus 37 that's 18 37 minus 23 that's 14 and 23 minus 10 is minus 13 is 10 that's correct and 13 minus okay good so we can see that there's a pattern here okay um, that it's going up by 4 and then it's going up by 6, sorry, and then it's going up by 10, and then it's going up by 14, and then it's going up by 18. So there's a pattern to how it's increasing. Okay, the amount it increases by is increasing itself by 4 each time. If I go from 6 to 10, I've got to add 4. From 10 to 14, I've got to add 4. From 14 to 18, I've got to add 4. So that means the amount I have to add has to increase by 4. So as I was adding 18, now I'm going to add... 22. So my answer is going to be 77 because you've got to add 4 more than you added before. So before we added 18, now we're going to add 4 more than 18, which is 22. Okay? So that's actually a quadratic sequence. We're going to, when we find the nth term, we're going to look more into detail about that in part 2. Um, sequence B, if we try to do the same thing, we'll see it doesn't really help us. We've got 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 6 is 9, and 9 plus um, 18 is 27, and then 27, it's, it comes, it's, there's not really a pattern here, 81 minus 27, okay, gives us something like 54. Okay, I know, I know actually what the sequence is, but I'm just trying to make you um, go through a certain process in case you see a question and you're not sure. So we can see that there's not really any pattern found by, by looking at the differences, okay? There's like, you're gonna have a four here, then you're gonna have a, um, 12 here, then you're gonna have something way bigger than that. So listen, there's not any pattern to be found by looking at the differences, okay? So we're gonna look at some other types of ways of looking at some connection. And the other obvious way is to see, do I, do I have to multiply by a certain number each time to get to the next number? And there you'll realize that, oh yes, I, I do. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 times 3 is 81. And 81 times 3, 3 8 is 24, so it's 243. 81 times 3, just to make sure. 81 times 3, 243, that's right. Okay, so there we have filled in this table. Okay, so the first one is a... This is a quadratic sequence, and the second one is actually, it's called an exponential sequence, okay? An exponential sequence, sometimes they're called a geometric sequence. When you have to multiply by the same number each time to get to the next number, okay, it's an exponential sequence. And now we're going to look at the nth terms. So for A, we see that the second differences are four. So we, I know for sure it's quadratic, because the second differences gives us a constant okay it's definitely quadratic it's going to have something to do with there's going to be an n squared somewhere in it right now if you look at the second differences okay it's four okay the second difference is a four okay so if this whatever the second difference is that number 
divided by 2 will tell you the coefficient of x squared. Okay, so I know it's got something to do with 2n squared. It's definitely got something to do with 2n squared. It's going to have some connection to 2n squared. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to write down n. n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Then I'm going to write down what 2n squared is. I'll write n squared first so that it's easy for us to see. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and 36. Then I'm going to write down what 2n squared is because we know it's got something to do with 2n squared. So 2n squared, and I'll, I'll write this in a different color. Like Maybe I'll write it in black so that it stands out from the rest because this is what we're going to be using. So 2n squared. Now that's that's 2 times this number, which is 2, and 2 times this number, which is 8, and 2 times this number, which is 18, and 2 times this number, which is 32, and 2 times 50, and 2 times, that's going to be 72. Okay, now, I'm going to leave a gap, so let me just get rid of this down here. I'm going to leave a little gap, okay, and then I'm going to start writing down, um, I'm going to write down the actual sequence we have. We've got 7. The next number was 13. The next number is 23. The next number is 37. Then you have 55. Then you have 77. Okay. So this is our sequence. So I'm going to think, what do I have to do to get from 2n squared to our sequence? Well, you see each time, 2 plus 5. 8 plus 5 is 13, 18 plus 5 is 23, 32 plus 5 is 37, 50 plus 5 is 55, 72 plus 5 is 77. So you can see that this is going to be a plus 5 here all the way across. So I know the sequence is going to be 2n squared plus 5. So my answer is 2n squared plus 5. That's the sequence. Let me write that a bit neater. That is the sequence that we're looking for. And we can check, always check. For example, let's choose a random one. Let's choose 4. I'll put 2 times 4 squared plus 5. That's 2 times 16, which is 32. Plus 5 gives you 37. Is it 37? Uh, so, yes, it is 37. Sequence A, 37. Okay. So, there we have sequence A done. It's a quadratic sequence in the form 2n squared. How did I know there was a 2 there? Because the second difference was 4. It's always a half of that second difference. Okay. So if the second difference is 2, it will be 1n and 1n squared. If the second difference was 10, it would be 5n squared. If the second difference was 1, it would be a half n squared. Okay. Now there's other ways that people use to do these questions, like using some sort of simultaneous equations and memorizing certain patterns and stuff. Um, but I much prefer doing it like this. Um, the only thing you have to really memorize here is the fact that whatever the second difference is, you take half of that as a coefficient and then you continue and you, you use that and look at the um, final answer and see how you get there. Okay, so that's part A. And part B says for sequence, um, sorry, part B, yes, sequence B, which is 1, 3, 9, 27, 81 and 2, 4, 3. Let me move this out of the way again. Okay. So sequence B, as we can see here, is 1 and 3 and 9 and 27 and 81 and 2, 4, 3. Okay. Now, we, we, we said that we have to multiply by 3 each time. Now, what you have to realize is when you multiply by the same number each time, it's called a, an exponential or a geometric sequence, okay? And it's always going to be in the form of the number that you're multiplying, which is called the common ratio, to the power of something. Okay, again, there's a formula that you can learn, okay? And I'll, I'll explain the formula to you after I've explained how to do it in a bit more of a mental way, okay? Most people would probably uh, like the formula, but I don't like to just teach people by... Um, memorizing formula. I like them to understand what's going on. So you have to basically realize that whenever you multiply 
by the same number to get to the next term it's going to be something to do with that number which is three here because you're multiplying by three each time it's going to be something to do with that number to the power of something okay three to the power of i won't put n here because we're not sure exactly how that is related to right now it's three to the power of something okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to um write down I'll move this down a bit okay i'm going to write down this is the first term this is the second term this is the third term this is the fourth term this is the fifth term this is the sixth term okay i'm going to write down each of these terms in terms of three to the power of something so i know that for example one is three to the power of zero and three is three to the power of one and nine is three to the power of two and 27 is 3 to the power of 3. 3 to the power of 3. Let me tidy that up a bit. Okay. And 81 is 3 to the power of 4. And 243 is 3 to the power of 5. Okay. And then I'm going to compare that with the position of the term. First term, 3 to the power of 0. Second term, 3 to the power of 1. Third term, 3 to the power of 2. Fourth term, three to the power of three. Fifth term, three to the power of four. Sixth term, three to the power of five. So ask yourself, for example, if you said the tenth term, it would be three to the power of what? One less than that, isn't it? Nine. Every time this is one less than the term. So if it's the nth term, it would be three to the power of one less than n, which is n minus one. So the, the nth term is three to the power of n minus 1 and the minus 1 is in the power it's not taken away from the whole thing okay so that's how you can deal with these type of sequences um, the, the way to use a formula which I don't as I said I, I prefer to just explain at this stage when we're doing IGCSEs I prefer to explain this using um, thinking rather than formally anyway the 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 nth term un is equal to a r time to the power of n minus one okay where a is the first term a is the first term and r is a common ratio this is only for this is only for these type of sequences where you see you have to multiply by the same number so the first term here is one so that's one and the common ratio here is the number you have to multiply by each time which is three so you'll have okay so it's going to be um, 1 times r which is 3 to the power of n minus 1 so 3 to the power of n minus 1 is your answer okay but as I said I prefer to to for us to think about it okay no problem now part b the nth term of another sequence is 4n squared plus n plus 3 find the second term well that's when n equals 2 so you have 4 times 2 squared plus 2 plus 3. That's 4 times 4 plus 5, which is 16 plus 5, which is 21. Okay. And find the value of n when the nth term is 498. So you have 4n squared plus n plus 3 plus 3 equals 498. So now what we're going to do is we're going to 4n squared plus n, bring everything to one side. So you're going to have minus 495 and that's equal to zero. All right. Now, this is the very last question on the paper. So you have to try to factorize this to find that, of course, n is going to be whole number. So you, it's factorizable. Okay. If you get stuck on this, you could use a quadratic formula if you wish to, um, which is fine. Okay. Um, because you've got to find two numbers that multiply to give you 4 times minus 495 and add to give you 1. Okay, so it might be something that's um, a bit difficult for you to think of in your head. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a method. You could use a formula, that's fine, but I'm going to show you a method that if you do, your mind blanks out when, you, when you're trying to factorize something. Okay, and you just can't think of it and you're in the exam and you know, time's running out. Okay, to save you some time and some effort, I'm going to show you a way of factorizing this without, uh, by using the calculator, okay, and the examiner will think that you've done it.
properly. So here we're going to solve a polynomial. So we press 2. It's quadratic, so we press 2 again because it's degree 2 squared. Then I'm going to put in the coefficient of the n squared, which is 4. Press equals. The coefficient of n, which is 1, it's 1n, equals. And then the constant, which is negative 495, press equals. And it's going to give me two answers. It's going to give me 11, and it's going to give me minus 45 over 4. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to write n equals 11, and n equals negative 45 over 4. All right? Now, I'm going to now work backwards. Okay? I've, why have I left this space? Because I'm going to work backwards so it looks like we've gone this way but in fact we've gone that way all right so i know if n equals 11 that means before that it was n minus 11 equals 0 that's how i got n equals 11 and if i know that n equals minus 45 over 4 if i work backwards it would be 4n equals minus 45 right and here okay that would be one bracket would be n minus 11 okay and here you would have had um, 4n minus 45 plus 45 equals 0. Okay, that's how that would have come. 4n equals minus 45. 4n plus 45 equals 0. So the other bracket would be 4n plus 45 equals 0. And you see, you've basically worked backwards, but it looks like you factorized it. Okay. Okay, so we have here the answers n equals 11 and n equals minus 45 over 4. So, of course, it's asking us for one value of n. And, of course, that must be 11 because n must be an integer and n must be, of course, it must be positive. Okay, so the first term of a sequence starts with 1. You don't start with minus anything. The, the, the actual the position of the first term of the sequence is 1. Okay, it could be a negative number, but its position is 1, and n is the position of the sequence. So it has to be um, positive, and it has to be an integer. You don't have, like, you know, the, the 1.5th entry. No, it's the first entry, the second entry, the third entry, the fourth entry. That's the position of each of the sequences. So it must be an integer, and it must be positive. So this answer is not going to be included. All right, it's going to be n equals 11 as our only answer. Okay, so I hope that was clear. That's the end of this exercise, or the end of this uh, question, and the end of this paper, and the end of this session of February, March 2019. Um, I hope it was beneficial, and thank you for watching.